uh, one day when you just go to the, to, to the registrar and you look at the, the last page, you will see that it is, it is, it is uh, rubber stamped, uh, Law Society General Office of Acceptance of Document or something. They call it GOSP. Every document which is exchanged between the, the legal practitioner has got that rubber stamp. That's how the legal practitioners exchange documents. It's cheaper, it's efficient, because before this office was, was, was established, this messenger used to crisscross the, the town and going all along and, and, and going to the messenger of the court, going to the magistrate, going to the registrar, and so within the firm you won't see him because so hey, because he's just going around, you know, delivering this document. I would like to, I'd like to, to, to talk and interactive. I think it's going to be better. Every, every document, every document, every document starting new proceedings, every document starting new proceedings, like an application or a summons, it must be issued, it must be date stamped, it must be given a number by the registrar. And you have to pay, when you, when, when, when you issue the document, obviously you, there are court fees which you must pay, uh, which you must stick a, a revenue stamp on, on top of the, of, the, of, the, of the document on the right top corner of the, of the, of the, of the document. That is what the rule says. And that document must, or that revenue stamp must be defaced to indicate that you have paid the court fees. Um, it used to be $10, I think now it's $200 per, per new document which is being issued. Uh, so that is, a, that, that is the court fees, the court money collected by the government, on, by the registrar of it on behalf of the government to, to pay for the for the people who are doing these documents. In, in many countries, it's, it's very prohibitive. The amount to issue summons is very, very high, which is to the extent that people cannot afford to, to just to cause a summon to be issued because it's so high. I mean, here it's $200 is, is still nothing because when you, when you look at if you go to the registrar office and you see the people involved in processing this document, this first document, the clerk of the court, they, they, they have to find, in the olden days, they have to find a, a, a folder, they, they have to register, they have to have big books where they have to keep records of this thing because you have to keep this record for, for years. And for that exercise, a person just pay two hundred dollars. It's just not enough to, to, to do that. I mean, to cover the costs involved in when you look at the, the whole process of issuing the first document. No, the 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 there are two the service at the law society. In fact, it's not called service. It's called delivery. When you go to the to the rules, um, the service is service by the deputy sheriff. But when they, the laws, I mean the lawyers exchange document among themselves, that, that, that act is called delivery. It's not called service. Yeah. So that is, it's, it's, not, it's not necessary to be served by the services, by the deputy sheriff, in the magistrate, uh, magistrate court, by the messenger of the court. Because you see, by that time when you, it can only on, on the person because when you, when you go to the summons, the summons in the high court is addressed to the deputy sheriff, instructing him to serve the summons on the defendant. So by that time, when the, when the first document is issued, the, the defendant would not have a lawyer. So it has to be saved on, because in the summons, there will be, say, the deputy sheriff is instructed to save this, this um, summons on so-and-so at this address, 
and he's also instructed to to notify the, the deputy sheriff is, is instructed to serve the summons or the application in this case on a specific person and explain to that person the significance of that document and then he is instructed to make a return, to make a report, to file a report saying that the document that is now to the lawyer who, who issued the, the, the summons and to the registrar. To say the document which I was given, the first document which I was given, I have saved it on this person on this day, at this address, at this hour. This is my, my report. Now, the original then of that document goes to the registrar for filing and a copy of what, what is called a return of service by the deputy sheriff goes to the, to the lawyer of the party who issued the plaintiff or the, or the applicant. Now, the, that is the only way uh, both the court and the lawyer will know that the court process has reached, has come to the knowledge of the, the defendant or the respondent. Then you start counting in the next, in the, in the next slide, you'll see that you start now counting that in that document, the, the defendant or the respondent is given a time within which to give his notice that he is going, he or she is going to defend the matter. So you can only start counting from, what the, from the return of service. Because you will have a return of service if you are a lawyer, a legal practitioner for the plaintiff, you will start counting from that. Because you have to enter appearance within, within um, I think it's 10 days or 15 days, you, you, you can check that, um, uh, from the date that the document was saved on him. Um, If the document, if the, if the deputy sheriff didn't find or could not save the summons or the application on the person, then his report will say that what we call a return of non-service. So then he, will, he or she will say that, I went to this, to this address, I tried to save the, the, this thing, I could, there is no address like that, or I went there, and there was nobody at this house or at this number. So that means that the days for, for, from the date of service and cannot start running. Okay. Are we together? Yes. In urgent application, you, you find that probably somebody, I think you, somebody gave you a lecture about what they call ex parte application where in most cases there is no, nobody on the other side. So a person will issue that, that first document and ask the, the registrar to set it down and he goes to court, get an order, and that order is the one which is being saved on the, on the, on the interested or affected person. It's, it's, it's very, you can, you can go to court, but it must be issued. It must be issued. You can go to court without service first, and you get an order, what is called an interim order. You get a, a rule nice. You get, for instance, um, take, for instance, somebody who, um, who owes you money and you heard that he is about to flee the country, he has bought an air ticket and he's going to the airport at four o'clock, you know, tomorrow afternoon. So you cannot, all what you need to do is to have that document issued, the first document issued, you go to court you get an order from the judge to say that he should be, he should be arrested. That is what they call uh, suspected defuga. 
he should be arrested and then pending you instituting an action against him for, to pay. So there wouldn't be a service. He, the, order with, the order which say that he must, he must stay first, you to give you a, 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 an opportunity to issue summons, and so that you can then, he can then be saved with the summons. Because the application, you can't go to court and ask somebody to pay by, yeah. by way of application. You have him first interdicted or restrained to leave the country, and so that you are given a chance to issue someone and served on him by the deputy sheriff. So that, again, emphasizes the importance of uh, serving the first document by the deputy sheriff. Okay. Yes, um, if you go to Rule 132, um, there is a, there's a time period within which the summons must be, must be saved, otherwise it, it becomes stale, or it, they call it lapse. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure sub-rule what, but if you go through that rule, I think it's probably four or five, sub-rule four or five around there. If a summons has been issued by the by the registrar, or the application has been issued by the registrar, and it not served within a period, I think, of 12 months. It's not issued within the period of 12 months, then it laps. Then you have to start afresh. Yes, uh, he can. No, 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 he can. I think the rule says that he must go there at a reasonable time. He cannot go at 12 o'clock midnight. Uh, and, and mind you, the, uh, the, 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 the sheriff have to pay the, the lawyer who issued the, the summons, who sent him the thing to, to save, the, the summons to save. If, if, if he goes to the house and it is, not, it is expected nobody will be at house that time, then the lawyer might say, no, I'm not going to pay your account because you went at an unreasonable time. How can you expect somebody to be at, at, at the house at that time? Um, so he, he must go to, to, but he can only go to the address which you gave him. Some, sometime the, the, the deputy sheriff, like for instance in Novamboland, we don't have addresses, you know that. There is no street, uh, Angola Street number 65 or something like that. You know, the people will tell you, pass, pass this tree and that tree, and therefore you turn left, and then <laughs> that is where you find the house. <laughs> so what, what they know, what they, in practice, what the people do is that they, they give the defendant's address in the summon and say, this is his cell phone number. And they, the, the, the deputy sheriff will then phone the defendant and say, look, I'm a deputy sheriff, I got your summons here, where can we meet? And then the defendant say, okay, let's meet at ShopRite, in front of ShopRite. And then the deputy sheriff will then say, I, in his return of service, he will then record that I, I call the, the defendant on this number which you gave me and we met, we made arrangement and we met at ShopRite I gave it the document to him and I explained the importance of the document. Then you know that he, the defendant knows that there is a case made against him. After six months. Okay, good, thanks. After six months. Okay, um, the, the, next, the next thing is opposition. Um, now, the, the respondent is given a time within which to give his or her intention to oppose. Uh, that is within, within 14 days from the date of, of uh, yes. He has to, to give notice to the, to the plaintiff that I'm going to oppose or to the applicant that I'm going to oppose this application. Now, once he's given that, that notice, then he, must, he or she must file the opposing affidavit. Why? he is opposing. He must do it within 14 days. In case of the government, because of the size of the government, the government is given 21 days to do that. Now, 
Um, once that has been done, then the other side, the applicant has got 14 days to, to file replying affidavit. There are only three set of, of, of affidavit. The, the supporting of uh, uh, founding affidavit is called, and then the respondent must file the answering affidavit, and then the applicant must reply. Only two set, uh, three sets of affidavit. Now, um, now this, these rules were in, in operation before we got an uh, e-justice system. Um, in terms of the rule as they stand now, this is just, we just see that from the, the notice of, of, of motion is filed, there is a notice of opposition, and then the three affidavit are exchanged. And then in terms of the rule, as they stand now, the registrar, this is a paper file, what we say. The, the registrar must then allocate the, the file to a judge who's going to manage it. Now, with the introduction of e-justice, a system is, is slightly different. In fact, very different. Once the the um, case has been filed and uh, there is a, a return of service by the deputy sheriff. The system will allocate that, that file automatically to a judge. It doesn't, it doesn't wait for the exchange of pleadings to finish. Uh, we, we have, as I said at, at the beginning, that we have two streams. We've got action where the summons are issued, and we've got applications. In the application stream, we've got three judges, and in the action stream, we've got about four or five judges. Now, the system, when it gets a, a case, it allocates to one of those three judges. And, they, and it, it, uh, it is configured in such a way that it distributes the work evenly among the three judges. Um, so immediately once the, the, the application has been saved, then the system will allocate to a judge, and the judge will then you have to, as a judge, you have to accept because the system will, on, on our cell phone or devices or on your computer, it will notify you that you have been allocated a matter. You must accept it. So you go to the system, and before you accept, there is, they say, there is a way where you can go into the document which has been filed and you see whether you are conflicted or not before you accept. So if you are not conflicted because um, you, you have already maybe had a matter against a person, you feel you are not comfortable to, to sit in judgment in this case, so somehow you are conflicted. If you feel that you, or you find that you are conflicted, then you reject it from the judge point of view. Now, once the system is, once the judge is rejected, the, that, that matter will come to me. Um, and I have to, the judge will have to give reasons why he, he cannot accept the, 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 the matter. So then I will then uh, allocate it manually. Because we are only three in the, in the system is uh, judge A reject it, and then I only have got Judge B in myself. <laughs> so either I take it if I'm not conflicted, or I give it to the other judge, or my, my other colleague. So, so the, difference between the, the difference between the paper file and the e-justice system is, is such that with the paper file, 
the registrar had to wait until the parties have finished exchanging documents between themselves. It's only then that the whole file is allocated to the judge. But with the e-justice system, immediately the matter is allocated to a judge who's going to, who's then will start managing it. Yeah, the reason will be say, he's my brother-in-law. I can't, I can't sit in judgment, okay. Nobody would like you to have to sit in the case of your brother-in-law or is this, he's my drinking buddy, you know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't accept this. So, um, but there is, a, there, is a, there is a way where we, um, I can call the judge and ask for more reasons and we can discuss it and, and say, I, I think you are oversensitive. Uh, it, I don't think that is, that's a reason why you should, uh, you should, uh, um, and, and it's, unless it's a, a, a sort of example like I gave you, sometimes it's just a person just feel and say, look, um, this person, you know, I, I know him, but I'm not comfortable whether I should take it or not. And so you, 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 you sit and exchange ideas and he, he might feel that, or the judge feel, okay, I can take it. If they are against me taking the matter, they can raise it with me. Or the judge will say, okay, I'm going to, 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 to raise with them that, you know, uh, this is, I had this problem. If the parties have got any problem with me sitting on the matter, then uh, they must tell me so that I can, I can pass it on to somebody else. Does that answer? Yes, okay. All right. Um, once you have accepted the, as a judge, once you accepted the, the matter, then you must call for, um, <coughs> for a case management conference. Um, you, you send out, a, the, the, there is a notice which is generated by the system and you, you send it out to the parties, calling them to come before you on a certain date. Uh, the dates are, it's indicated there that, you know, at least, um, three weeks, you know, give them three weeks because they have to, in terms of the rule, the, the lawyers must come together and, and uh, compile a report um, about how they see the case is going to evolve. Okay, then I'm going to... <clears throat> that, is, that is sort of a, a without headings. That is a case management conference. Many judges what hereby directs the party or the legal practitioner to attend a case management conference to be held at Winduk at that time. At court indicate that they would you also indicate the the, the court, the what is where they see A, B, C, you know. Um, and then the parties are are required to um, to compile a report. Uh, which they are going to submit to the to the remaining ju judge. This is this is again uh, in terms of the rule as they are now. Um, the what happened in practice uh, because by the time you send out this notice, the respondent might not have filed their answering affidavit. So it's, it's very premature. What happened in practice is that the parties will come to you. Their report will be to set out the, the timeline. They will say, <clears throat> the report will say, um, we have agreed that the, the respondent shall file his or her answering affidavit on or before this. The, the applicant will file his replying affidavit on or before this date. And then, and then you look at those timelines as, as a judge. Mind you, you know, the, the legal practitioner will push the dates as far as possible. 
for you is to try to keep them, you know, those, those timelines short. You say, why do you need a month to file an answering affidavit? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not agreeing to that. I'm prepared to give you two weeks. You cannot, you, you don't need uh, such a long time to, to um, no, no, my client is in, uh, is in Kietman Soap and uh, it's very difficult to, you know, you listen and you say, okay, fine, but not, not a month. I can give you, you know, three weeks. Uh, uh, so that is, that is what happened at, at, this, at that stage. I think I have a, this is a, this is a court order. <clears throat> Which is a court order was what, what uh, typically happens when you, when the parties come before you and you make, you say, the respondent must file his answering affidavit on or before the 2017, like, like I told you, like I mentioned earlier. And then you, you postpone then the case for case management. So, or for, for um, status hearing. The status hearing is to try to find out whether the parties have complied with the timeline in the order of the court. Because you, you make, when they come to you with a report, you have to make that report an order of court. If there's no compliance with those timeline, then the, 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 the legal practitioner is in, is in contempt, you know, and then, then they must be sanctioned to be imposed for failing to comply with the court order. So that, that is what happened, but when you read the rules, the rules tell you that uh, the parties must come to you in terms of Rule 71 uh, with, a, with a joint report, but <clears throat> because, <coughs> because the problem with that is that, that like I said, by that time, the parties don't know the dispute. They haven't seen the other side case. So you, you cannot ask them to come with a, a report showing how they are going to, uh, to shorten the proceeding or to, uh, you know. So you, you, we, we defer that, that, that rule. Um, but the rule says that, you know, they have to show you the nature and the basis of repetitive claims. By that time, sometimes, as I said, the, 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 the applicant wouldn't know what is the respondent's case. Uh, reasonable way in which the application may be determined promptly. You know, they wouldn't know it. It's, it's just too early. So that rules, um, uh, it, it doesn't work well in, in, in in practice, it doesn't work well in practice. So what what works? What happened now, especially with the uh, uh, e-justice, is what I told you earlier. Um, but this rule, um, it comes later. You can use it later once the once the parties have filed their answering affidavit, all their all their papers, and so on. So it's, it's, it's very useful if you have a, a big, complicated case. So that you force the... the parties to, to define or, you know, to limit the issues. I think I, I, I told you already what, what happened here, what happened in practice. That is really what happened that, you know, you, you set out the timeline within which they have to do. I show you the order, how the order reads. Um, <clears throat> if, the, if the case is, is not complicated, you skip this, the, the Rule 71 proceedings because, because what happened is that with, with, once the parties have filed their affidavit, affidavits, you, you, will, you will see from the affidavits what are the issues. So you don't need uh, them to confine for you what, what need to be decided. And moreover, they, after this, <clears throat> uh, if the, the case is not complicated, then you, 
you, you ask them to, to, to prepare the heads of arguments. That is where they, you know, they set up their main uh, or their, their principal argument for their case. And from that, from the heads of argument, you will be able to see their different position of the parties. And it will also inform you what are the issues you are required to, to, to decide. So you don't need the parties to define for you the, the issues because those issues will already be set out in the, in the, in the, in the heads of arguments. So, but as I said, Rule 71 is very, is very useful when you have a very big, complicated, tender sort of uh, application where you have various, say maybe you've got uh, three or four respondents. Uh, each one has got his own position. So you ask them, um, the good thing about this, <clears throat> about the, these rules is that unlike before these rules, the, the parties define the issue which they want you to, to decide for them. Prior to this, you go to these papers and you, and it's for you to, dis, having read the papers, it's for you then to say, it seems to me the dispute the party wants me to, 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 to resolve is this one. But with these rules is that the party themselves say, we want you to, we want you to, um, to decide on this. We've got a dispute around this and this. We want you to, to decide on this issue. These are the issues which we want you to, to. So it's not your fault. If you make a mistake in identifying the issue, uh, in the old 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 uh, system, I mean, you were going to be blamed that the judge misconceived the issues before before him or her. That is not what he or she was uh, asked to, to to decide. But in this with this case, you the party themselves tell you what they want you to decide. So it's a very very useful rule. Um, uh, as I said, mostly in when you got. Uh, <coughs> A complicated case. I have shown you the court order. <sighs> you know, through when you when you are managing the uh, an application. It's not always, it cannot always go smooth, like in terms of the timeline. You know, there are always issues. Um, the parties will come to you and say, look, judge, we, we have started talking. We are talking to each other. Uh, we, we, there might be some way to settle this case. Uh, can you please um, give us uh, two weeks so that we can see whether we can, uh, we can, you know, find a solution. And obviously, you 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 have to to give them a chance to to go and talk. And so, so you 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 postpone the case uh, for for status hearing to see what happened in the meantime. The procedure is now less uh, formal. Uh, prior to that, I mean, it was very difficult to see a judge. Uh, you have to go through the registrar. You could only communicate through the to the judge or with the judge through the registrar. Uh, it was very, very difficult. But now, the system is such that um, you approach the, the judge clerk or uh, uh, assistant, research assistant, and he, the part, you, the two of you, then uh, arrange for, to, to see the judge in chambers. Uh, and then you, you put your case before the judge. Yes, you can, you can because, because, uh, uh, because the file is on the system is yours, you got access to that, you listen to them, and you make a chamber order. No, they, because the party will come to you and they say, look, there are these developments. Um, 
uh, we do not foresee that we will be able to keep to the timeline which you, which you, you gave, uh, because um, uh, my client who was supposed to be here to fly from, from Germany to be here so that I can file an affidavit is not here. For other reason, he is, you know, I cannot, I cannot keep to the timeline. He's coming, you know, in the two weeks' time, and uh, we would like you to, you know, so that we can change the timeline. So you, you, you change those timeline, and then you don't, need, you don't need to require the people every time to appear in court because it's expensive. It's very, very expensive. So, um, so you, there is that, that, uh, that uh, you know, avenue you can use that the legal practitioner has got you know access to the judge you know they can they can they can approach the judge in chamber and say look this is what what is happening in our case yeah the the rules make um, provision for sanctions um, the the sanctions are very your option really uh, is are very limited as to probably to, to cost, you know, um, uh, you can only uh, order the person who is in default to pay the cost because occasioned by his default. Um, it's, it's, uh, there are some judges who are very uh, innovative in, in, in doing, <laughs> in sanctioning and sort of uh, you know, coming up with uh, innovative sanctions, you know. Uh, but it's, it's a, in a way, it, it, you have to have discipline. You, you, must, you must be seen to, to, to be in charge. And therefore, if there is non-compliance, and if there is no non-compliance, uh, you have to be firm. Uh, otherwise, you... You know, your, your, your management of the case become very um, loose. And then you are going to, um, what, what, what we do, <clears throat> what we do to see whether the judges are, um, are managing their cases effectively is to, to see how many, how many times, for instance, they have postponed the case, say, for status hearing or for case management. You are supposed to have only three, uh, uh, you know, instances for case management, status hearing, and another case management, and then the hearing. And we we have we have benchmark uh, that a case must be finalized within 25, 24 months from inception. Uh, and then it must be final. Once it's allocated to you, you must really manage it so that within 12 months, the case is finished. If it is a extraordinary, then 24 months or something like that. So we got different benchmarks so that when, when we go through the, <clears throat> the reports, uh, because there are reports on the system, it generates a lot of reports. The JP, the JP and I and the registrar, we got, we go through the, the judge's file, you know, because it's on the system. I don't need to come and say, bring me your file. I can just go into the system and see. Um, this case has been postponed six times for case management. What what's going on? Uh, it's beyond the benchmark, and it's postponed every time for case management. This judge is not doing his work. Um, there's something wrong with this thing. And then we can call you and say, why, do you, why are you postponing, the, having this case for, postponed so many times for case management? Uh, you know, obviously it depends on the, but it, it reflects badly on you if, if you, are, you, you are not managing your case within those benchmarks. Uh, so and you, you really have almost to be Merciless in, in because it reflects badly on you because compared to the other people if you just sort of like uh, ask postponing just for the asking then uh, you, you you're really going to look bad from the from the statistic.
No, you can strike the meta from the row. You just struck from the row, and then that's the end of the meta. Yeah, I mean, that's how harsh it can be. You, you know, you strike the meta from the row, um, uh, and you can say that this meta should not be put back on the row until this and this has been complied with. And they have to, they have to, um, they have to, to put the, back, uh, the meta back on the roll. They have to apply. They cannot just comply with what they didn't do and then put it on, on the roll. They have to apply to the same judge and say, we want now this meta to be put on the roll. Sometimes it's, it's, it's you dismiss, completely dismiss the case. Uh, that's the end of the matter. You haven't complied. If you are the a defend, if you are the plaintiff, sorry, that is the end of the matter. It's uh, it's dismissed. So it's it yeah. I mean, it can be harsh, but I mean, people must comply with the rules. Well, what you do uh, if he's not present, you strike the matter from the roll for non-appearance. And then he or she must then come back again to apply that the meta be put back on the roll. And that is when he or she must then come give good reason why, um, you know, there was no appearance, nothing was done. And you get all sort of explanation. I, my, uh, my secretary uh, misdialed the, the thing. She, did, she took a wrong date or Oh, I, 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 I was inhospitalized. I mean, nowadays they'll come with a, a, a medical certificate from a poor, and a, a person is, le is staying in Windhoek. I mean, I don't know what he's doing in poor. <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a management issue. I mean, you have to manage. I mean, Management has got challenges. It's, it's really, you have, it's a management issue. Uh, you've got good cases, you good legal practitioners who you do not have problem with, and then you've got, you know, constantly it's a problem. Every time it's a problem. And then, uh, and, and we, we as judge, we know them. I mean, uh, you, you know, I mean, most of you are magistrate, you know, uh, how the legal practitioner can, you know, you know your, your good guys, you know your, your guys whom if he tells you something, you really have to, to take with a pinch of salt, you know. So uh, it's, it's the same thing. Uh, it's a human thing and you have to manage it. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, okay, this is just a probably a, just a summary of the of the of the, the the process of management of the application in terms of the rule. That is in terms of the rule. Um, like we said, when docket allocated to you, I mean, pleading have closed, and then acceptance of the docket. You know, the registrar will then allocate to you. And then the rules say, rule 71, 72, you go through the, that, that process of case management. And then once everything is done there, you, you, you allocate a, a, a date for hearing. You allocate a, a date when they have to file their heads. And obviously, after hearing the, the arguments, you have to either to make an order or to, to write a judgment. This is the one uh, I explained to you in terms of the e-justice. Uh, notice of motion filed, deliver notice to oppose the e-justice, allocate to a judge. The judge accepts the case. You start managing uh, uh, that, that rule. Conference there is not correct. Uh, it, it's supposed to be that, but you, you call for conference and, and, I, and I show you that by that time, the, the parties have not filed their heads yet. So, I mean, they are affidavits. That's why managing judge set timeline for filing affidavits, heads of argument in other doc document, and then you give them enough time to do that, and then you postpone it for status hearing to see, have they complied? Everybody now done everything. Once you have done that, uh, what, I, what I do is 
I, I, I wait for, for them to file their, all their affidavit, and I postpone the case for status hearing. Once they have done that, then because uh, in most cases, when you give them a hearing date, then they, then they, they become lax. They don't file their heads. So I don't give them a date until they, they file their heads. Then I know that the case is, is ready for hearing. So because once the heads are filed, then I know that I can give a date and then I can hear the matter. Because sometimes we we'll give them a date and you, 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 keep, you keep, say, you, you book yourself a day or two open and then two days before the hearing, they say, oh, but I haven't filed my heads. Uh, I'm going to apply for a, for a postponement. So then you are going to be out of court for two days, you know, twisting your fingers and doing nothing. So it's better to, it's better to, to give them a date once everything is ready. So yeah, that is my story, I think. It gives you flexibility. I mean, if you say you gave an order that they must file their, their papers on or before this date, uh, and then he files a date later. And now you, and then they come to you and say, look, uh, I didn't, uh, this, this is what happened. I, 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 Sometimes they will say, I was trying to access the e-justice system. I just couldn't access, or like yesterday, I was in court, and they say, our firm, the whole line, telecom line, just went down. Uh, we, were, we couldn't access internet. And obviously, in terms of your court order, that, that is out. So, you know, you, 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 you listen, and you say, I condone that. Uh, and, and some judges, will want a person to file um, an affidavit to explain that. Another judge will listen to the legal practitioner and say, I believe you, um, I condone you, let's move on. Because what, 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 you, must, what you must keep in mind also in this, in this balancing issue is the issue of cost. There's a lot of cost to be incurred by the litigant. If you are nitty picking, um, you might be angry with, with a legal practitioner, but the person who is really going to suffer in the end is, the, is, 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 a, is a litigant. Um, because you, you must keep in mind that every time the lawyer comes to, to court and see you and beg and file an affidavit and, and so on, the litigant is being charged. And the cost going up, um, you know. So there's a lot of balancing issue. There's a lot of uh, thing which you must keep in mind. And, and uh, if you have practice, like I have, you know, the cost of, there are some people who are saying, um, the, the introduction of case management, the cost has gone up because you got a lot of, you got a lot of interactive thing or inter, uh, activities which, which, which are required. And, and for that, for a lawyer, every activity is, is, is charged and the bill just goes up. So, you, you, you just, just keep that in mind that when you when you balancing the interests that they are, they are, there's a cost aspect, uh, there's a timeline of the bench, um, the benchmark, disposal benchmark, which you must keep in mind. There is also a question of discipline. I mean, you have to discipline the legal practitioners. You know, I mean, they have to comply with the court order, they have com to comply with, you know, what they are undertaking to do. So there is no straight answer. <laughs> well, well, I mean, look, uh, your, your system will show that the, like I show you the order, the order say that defendant was supposed to file uh, on or before this date, and then there's a date. 
and then the system will show on what date he or she filed. Because every movement you, it, you make on the system will show. There's no, there's no sort of shortcut. So they will, they will apply for condonation. And then obviously, you, because you have also to be consistent, your order, if it was not complied with, you cannot go ahead unless you condone. You have to show that you have condoned the non-compliance with the previous order. You cannot, just, you cannot just accept it. The system must show that you have condoned the, 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 the non-compliance by saying that the, the, the applicant non-compliance with uh, order of such and such a date by not filing it on or before that is hereby condoned. Then we have a system where <clears throat> where you, you are moved from the files which have been allocated to you. And you, you will be put in another judge, so swapping, so to say. So your, your, your files must be understood, understandable, I mean, to the whoever is coming in. So it's not, it's not your files forever, because you can you can be swapped, and the judge who's coming in must, must understand what is, what is going on in that file. So it, it must be consequent, and somebody from outside reading it must be able to understand what happened in this. Or you go and leave, and, and then for three months, then somebody else is, is left to manage your case, your cases, and then you have to you have to, whoever manage your case in your absence must also make sure that when the, the judge who was with that case come back from holiday, wherever, be able to follow what is happening. Because there's no, nobody can come and explain to you. You cannot run to the judge and say, what did you do here? And say, oh, well, I don't know what happened. I, I. <laughs> I mean, you've got so many files. You can't remember every file. I don't think uh, Funkis or Pico, uh, or Fikio applies because it's your, because the, what happened automatically, the person is bad. Like I said earlier, you cannot proceed without there being a bar being lifted. The bar can only be lifted if you condone the non-compliance. And you as a judge managing, you got a right to condone. You don't become functis of Fikio. Because it's, it's not you who, <laughs> who didn't comply. You are condoning. The order was made by, to, to be complied with by the legal, legal practitioners. So you can condone non-compliance. I mean, in terms of the rule, I'm not quite sure, maybe uh, uh, do you know where they not? They, I think it's rule 27 around there. 27, I think. It's where you find those, um, those the, you know, the power to, to comply, uh, to, to condone non compliance. Yes, that, that will be 27. So you've got, a, you've got a right in terms of that rule too. But I, I don't think, um, I think this of Vicky, excuse me? No, it doesn't apply. Because that is, that is, um, more of a, um, a substantive rule than a procedural one. What, what normally happens is that uh, if the legal practitioner call for a status hearing, it's because he or she foresees that, that she is going to encounter a problem to comply with the order. And therefore, she or he preempt and forewarn, which I think is a good thing to forewarn and say, look, I'm running into, into trouble, and therefore, uh, can, can we amend the, the, the timeline because I won't be able to comply with it? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's just like any other, you know, consideration. Yeah. It, it's just like any other thing which you have really to consider, you know, but you, you, you like I said, I mean, you, you have to, con to take everything in, con in consideration. 
the, um, the, 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 the reason given by the legal practitioner why he or she foresees that she won't be able to co comply with this thing. And, and if, if you are unreasonable, then it's, it's also, the judge will also cause cost. And, 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 and if the person give you reason, say that my client, uh, I, can't, I can't get hold of him or he hasn't got money, I'm, I'm not able to, to, to do anything anymore, he says that, uh, you know, unless I can wait until the end of the month or, or, or whatever reasons, then uh, I will have to, to withdraw. Because the legal practitioner will they say, look, uh, judge, I, I cannot go. My client has run out of money. He says that he's waiting for his uncle to send him money so that he can, uh, you know, he can fund the case. And you say, well, Bagayu, I'm not going to give you uh, and, you know, so things like that. I mean, there's no fixed rule. I mean, it's you, you as a judge will have to, to make the call and see whether is this a deserving case or not. Yes, I understand. Um, so you have made a decision to, to, to make the indication of the case. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you are in charge. I mean, it's you are managing the case. It's your case, you must manage it. Keeping in mind all the factors I have mentioned, in, including the, the disposal benchmark, the cost, the inconvenient, the fact that, you know, um, not all of us has got money to litigate. I mean, you know, we, you know, people get help from the family and all the things, you know, you, and you group them together and make a judgment call. It's a, it's a question of, of finance, money, that um, the legal practitioner, like I was saying earlier, that will come and say, you, you have your nice timeline set out to, for the parties to do something, and then you, next day you, you get a, a notice of withdrawal. The legal practitioner withdrew. That means your whole plan is, you know, is gone. Um, and then, because then the, um, the party will have to find another lawyer. You go to the legal, to legal aid, apply for legal aid. Legal aid will say we, we need uh, a month before we can consider the, 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 uh, the application. So, in the meantime, you can't really say, you can't really force the litigant to go ahead. So your case is stalled uh, until the person got his legal practitioner, you know, or, well, a reply from the legal aid. So that is really one example which can happen um, when a legal practitioner withdraws. Uh, and, and a person sometimes, I mean, uh, the litigant may not qualify for legal aid. Uh, it's just because from his profile or her profile, I mean, he it's, it's, it doesn't qualify. But then he might then come and say, I'm going to run my case on my own. And you can just imagine how difficult it is to, to for somebody on his own to run a case. Then it's, you've got a heavy responsibility and to assist him and to try to, you know, to be gentle. I mean, you can't just. That's, that's my question. And to what extent do you assist? It's, it's just not a controversial thing to issue. Uh, well, I mean, look, uh, there is a, there is a legal practitioner on the other side, if you are, you are lucky. And, uh, uh, and the two of you, will just have to try to, you know, to see how, how to maneuver and to navigate with the, with the person acting in, in person. It's very, it's very frustrating because, I mean, a person say, I'm going to act in person, and then he file heads. 
and then he's just going to re recite the constitution, that's all. <laughs> so, so it's a, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah. But okay, I think uh, we have uh, probably exhausted the topics. Yes, that is, that is my story then.